Before I start the video today, I have to say how insanely grateful I am to Doreen for your $20 donation. You are absolutely amazing and thank you for supporting my channel. It means a lot to me, trust me. What's up guys, Graham here. If you would love to comment in the comment section of my last Saturday video, then you are entered into the giveaway of five wrecks. I'm giving away five of them, so that will be one for each winner. And the winners of that giveaway are all those people right there. Congratulations, and I will be sending you your wrecks just shortly in the mail. This week's giveaway is 5,000 credits of whatever you want from the Rift Store as long as it is giftable and it has to be 5,000 credits or less. The rules are simple. All you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below of this very video and put in there your character name and server and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and hit that like button. The winner will be announced in the next Saturday video, in which case we will send the winner a message on YouTube. So make sure you check your YouTube inbox if you are the winner. Good luck everyone. What's up guys? Today we're going to go over the new Reaver build that is really going to dominate in the Warfronts. And a lot of people are going with different ways of running Reaver. I came up with my own variation and I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure people will have their own input on what they think is better, but I like this build. So if you want to run what I run, feel free to copy this. Alright, so let's go right into the Soul Tree here. And if you'd like to see this old build on a web page instead of having to squint at your screen or uh, you know pause the video or anything like that, then I will have a link to it in the description below this video so that you can just click on the link and it'll go to a website that shows this build here. So as you can see, we went with 61 Reaver, 11 Warlord, and 4 Rift Blade. Now, most other people are going with like a 15 uh, Tempest build. Some people are mixing Tempest and Paragon and uh, just a lot of different things. And those are PvE builds, man. Don't run those PvE builds in PvP because it's a whole different ball game once you get into PvP. You need heals. You need CCs. You need defensive abilities. You need a lot of stuff that these PvE builds are not running and that that's where a lot of people seem to get wrong about my builds is they look at the build and they go ah this will do much more damage or this here you know i can't believe you put that in the macro or something like that the thing is is that pvp is high intensity it's having to uh, think very quickly and also have a lot of cc and defensive abilities if you can get them and if you've got to macro ma micromanage like a hundred different skills on different buttons, then it's going to be very hard to PvP effectively. So, and you guys see how good I do in PvP. So, it, yeah, it, follow my methods. Trust me, I will lead you to victory. All right. So, as you can see, it's 61 points into Reaver. The 11 points into Warlord is uh, 5 into Soldier's Might. 5 into Strength of Arms, and 1 into Combat Veteran. Alright, and then we go 4 points into Rift Blade for Elemental Precision. Now this is going to allow you to get past uh, your opponent's resist since your dots and all of your other abilities are mostly, mostly death damage. It's not like physical damage or anything, so that's exactly what we want and we're also going with it for the uh avatar of wind which is going to increase your uh, dodge by three percent and your movement speed by ten percent and also the blade buff here which is non-finisher ability hits have a 25 percent chance to deal 1342 damage that's going to be great um if you're wondering why we went with warlord since that's kind of a physical uh melee range uh spec uh soul should i say it's because we want to be able to block here with combat veteran we can block without a shield um also we have a lot of things that's going to be very important to us such as recovery posture and this is going to make our builders heal for eight percent of attack power 
Um, also, we got a snare, which is going to be very important because we want to be able to snare our opponents as we kite them. And with the increased movement speed of Avatar Wind, you're going to be able to kite even better. And with Recovery Posture, you're going to be able to heal for all that damage that you're doing. So these just mesh so well. It's going to be so great in PvP. Trust me. I've been doing a lot of testing on this. And this is what I've finally come up with. I even went with Tempest as a third build for a while. But long range training does not stack uh, with uh, right here planar attunement and that increases the range of your range uh, the distance of your ranged attacks and so I don't know if you guys can hear that but the PB sound well the city sounds of Margo Palace here all right and the masteries here is 61 resonating strikes 62 soul regeneration 63 Gladi uh, gladiator combat training and this is pretty much a uh, a required one because it, it reduced the cooldown of viral stream by nine seconds a lot of the other stuff can be adjusted as you want but i'll explain exactly why we went with the uh, certain things that we did precision strikes and our last one is power variation Okay, let's go ahead and explain these because I noticed that I don't explain too much in my past videos and people just really start ripping into them thinking that I'm doing the wrong things whenever I am not, but they just don't understand it. So with resonating strikes, the reason why we went with this is for uh, critical hits with damaging abilities is going to add an absorb shield to us. Well, we're going to have so much healing going on with this build uh the absorb shield is going to be so much uh, of a good thing for us. Uh, whenever we're dotting up everybody, we're going to be healing the entire time. And it's just going to really make it to where it, the shield is so much better. And as you can see over here on Soul Feast with the, the Reaver Soul, you have Soul Sickness, Necrotic Wounds, and Flesh Rot will heal you 8% of the damage done by their damage over time effects. So we're going to have healing from that. Uh, we're going to have increased healing from Soul Regeneration, which is our 62 Mastery. Our 63 Mastery, of course, is for Viral Stream. Uh, and also it will uh, increase our movement speed, so that's really good as well. Uh, precision strikes, the main thing that we're going with here is that it increases the duration of damage over time effects uh, by six, per, uh, 6 seconds. That's really, really good. And with power variation, this is our big heal. If we actually get somebody on us, like a Paragon, uh, Pyro, Inquisitor, whatever we're having on us that's doing a lot of damage to us, we can dot them up, and then once we get low, we can go ahead and pop power variation, and we can heal ourselves up and continue to kite them. But a lot of times people will be able to open up a lot of damage onto you, so you not, need to be able to survive. And... Reaver is an awesome chitin soul because you can dot somebody up, you can run around a line of sight, and then they'll chase you around it, and you can be power variation healing yourself all the while that the dots are ticking off on them, and you're just kiting them and letting them die. All right, so let's go on to the other stuff. I kind of explained that for a long time, but that's all right. We'll, we'll roll with it. All right, so our buffs here are Binding of Affliction. Pestilence, Recovery Posture, Avatar of Wind, Stormblade, and of course any guild or planar buffs that you want to run. Okay, so let's go into the macros here. Now, these macros are constructed in a certain way that you may want to change them depending on your playstyle. Uh, naturally, whenever you become more experienced with the build after you've watched this and played with it for a long time, you'll see that you can probably separate some stuff, do it as you feel free to, and as you become more experienced with the build. Alright, so the spam button here is going to be casting Ravaging Strike. And I have Cancel Buff Plague Bringer in the spam button. Now, that's going to be something that is going to spam your uh, general uh, chat tab. So, I got to give a warning about that. That might be something that you just want to take out and manually turn on and off Plague Bringer as you feel free. All right. And then also have Eye of the Storm in here so it'll always snare the opponent and you can continue to kite them around. 
All right, then we have a burst macro here. And this is going to be huge because it it casts Eye of the Storm on the opponent so they're snared. You're going to do Shadow of Dread, which is going to apply all of your dots. It's going to do Explosive Infestation, Infestation, and Viral Stream. And then we have Ravaging Strike to follow up afterwards just in case you accidentally uh, do something wrong. You can, of course, cut out Ravaging Strike if you're somebody that spams the button too much. Because you do not want to cut off your Viral Stream once it starts channeling. You hit the burst and you keep hitting the burst until Viral Stream starts channeling. And then you want to stop. But this is also meant to be a button that you can spam if you just want to put out the most DPS that you can, so to say, in PvP. Because I find myself a lot of times running around just spamming this button. And not even my spam button. So that's just up to you. Uh, you can save it for burst if you like which is highly recommended actually. All right, so our AOE button here, this casts a lot of different things. It has our AOE snare and a lot of other things, but it's gonna do a lot of damage to a lot of people. So it, I can't explain how good this build is. All right, and then we have our dot creations. This is something that I realize that a lot of builds that people are making is that they they have to micromanage all three dots. And that's something that's kind of annoying. And if you don't micromanage them, then a lot of times the dots are falling off and you, you don't have any way to reapply them because uh, your Shadow Dread is down or whatever else. So I made a button that I can just hit it and it'll spam dots to a whole field of people. It'll uh, cast Plague Bringer and it'll spread the dots to everybody. So it's like an instant win button whenever you're fighting big groups. Alright, and then we have our heal button, which is, of course, you pop it and it'll heal you up with power variation. Alright, so what I got on my, uh, my bar down here, we got the spam button. We got our finisher, which is dire blow. We've got our burst button. We've got necrotic wounds. We've got our dots. We've got our AoE uh, spam button. We got our AoE Finisher, which is the Desecrating Blow. We've got Soul Sickness. We've got Power Variation, which is the Heal Macro. We got uh, Break Free on a separate button, of course. We have Spasm, which is going to interrupt an enemy, but it also stuns them for a few seconds. So that's really good. I, I'd rather have it split up to where I could stun somebody or interrupt them, but that's kind of the way it goes. All right, then we have... Uh, sergeant's order here so we can pull people off of cliffs if we need to let our if you're like in black garden or something well not black garden but um what is it uh codex and you want to pull people off of the cliffs into your group at the center flag then you can pull them down and let your whole crew uh rip them apart all right then we have shadow warp which teleports you 15 meters forward and removes all crowd control effects and then we have Cloak of Death, which is our slip away, basically. This is our warrior variation of slip away. If you get in trouble, you can cast this and it'll put you in stealth and prevent damage from breaking stealth for six seconds. All right, let's go right into how to play this build now. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that we get our dots on our opponent. And most people do it with the Shadow of Dread, so a lot of times I'll go right into the burst macro to really burst somebody down as much as possible and get all of those dots taken off on them. So I'm going to go ahead and go right into my burst macro. And I'm going to hit it to where it applies all of my dots and keep hitting it until Viral Stream starts going. Once Viral Stream starts, you want to quit hitting your Burst Macro because if you continue hitting it after that, it'll cast your Ravaging Strike and really cut off your Viral Stream. So if you're somebody that spams buttons like that, you might want to uh, take Ravaging Strike out of your uh, Burst Macro. I find myself really using the Burst Macro a lot to really maximize my DPS rather than going to the Spam button. But if they've already got dots on them and you're not really trying to blow your burst on somebody, then you can, of course, go to just your spam button. All right, once you've got all of your dots, you've bursted them if you'd like to, your finisher that you're going to be primarily using is Dire Blow. So make sure that you hit that as, as you feel free. All right, so 
that's kind of how this build is going to be working. It's all about the dots. The more dots that you have on the person, the more your abilities are going to hit. So use your burst macro all the time if you like, but you can save it for actually bursting somebody down if you like as well. Now your spam button is going to snare somebody and basically just cast Ravaging Strike, which is a decent dealing uh, damage dealing ability, but... I don't know. It's all up to you. I provided the macro just in case that's something that you would like to hit. All right. Now, one of the things to really understand about this build as well is that there are two abilities that really make this tick. One is Soul Sickness. Now, Soul Sickness I have on a separate button as well because I can... Most likely what you want to do is you want to take a healer and put them on your focus target if you know how to make a separate focus target then do it and you want to keep the healer always with soul sickness applied to them if you can that makes it to where the healing that they cast is reduced by 15 percent so that's going to make it to where they're going to heal their team less and it's going to make your team easier to uh, dominate all right so Another ability that you want to really keep an eye on is Necrotic Wounds. And once you apply that to your opponent, they'll take 15% less healing. So if you got the healer dotted up and you got your target dotted up with Necrotic Wounds, they're going to receive 30% less healing from that healer. So it's huge that you do that. Now, if you go ahead and hit your uh, dot macro, that will apply the dots to your opponent and then spread them to everybody else. So that healer will have all the dots. All their team is going to have all the dots. It's just going to be a really good thing. Now, we're going to go ahead and go into the AOE rotation now. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit our spam button, which is our AOE spam here. And what that's going to do is it's going to cast Shadow of Dread, apply it to our opponent, then it's going to spread it to everybody. And we can just hit that one button and it'll snare the whole team. It'll dot everybody up. It'll just do a lot of damage and it'll be really good. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit it. As you can see, this other Reaver's beside me trying to hit everything too, but... You just want to hit it until you get three combo points and then you hit your desecrating blow afterwards. And that's going to do a finisher on everybody. So dot them all up. Finisher. And this macro is going to automatically apply Plague Bringer which makes it to where our dots are going to spread to everybody. So yeah, everything fires off really well. It's just a matter of making the right macros that work for you. These are the ones that work for me, and you can copy exactly what I do. But if you feel the need to have, like, Plague Bringer on a separate button and take it out of all those macros, that might be something you want to do. Because also another warning I have to uh, say is if you can see my chat screen there. Uh, let's see. Let's go up. You can see where it says, could not cancel unknown ability Plague Bringer there. If you can see behind my head there. But uh, what that is, is that whenever we have the cancel buff in our macro, like I have it in mine, it'll spam up your chat with that. Uh, that's why I always use a separate chat anyway, chat window. But it'll spam up your general window with that uh, error if you don't have Plague Bringer up. But I would like to rather spam that up and have it in my macros to where it'll automatically turn on and off depending on which button I'm hitting. So... It's all up to you guys, whatever you like to do. Um, let's see, let's go over some of the other stuff. Uh, make sure you're applying your necrotic wounds to the target that you're fighting if they do not have all the dots already from your Shadow of Dread or something like that. Um, let's see, make sure Soul Sickness is being uh, cast on the healers. Make sure that they're dotted up with that. If you get in any kind of trouble, make sure that you're hitting your power variation macro because you can kite somebody around. You've got them dotted up and you can kite them around some kind of line of sight and heal up and all that. Now keep in mind that all of your dots and all that stuff is going to be healing you. So you're going to get a massive amount of healing anytime that you apply dots to everybody and all of your abilities in general. So... 
you know, you're going to be healed up pretty good, but then you're going to have those pyros, inquisitors, and everything else that's going to do a lot of damage to you. Uh, you might have a ranger chasing you or whatever that chitin is just not working with, and you might need that power variation while you're trying to survive. All right, so we have Spasm, which is going to interrupt the opponent, but it also stuns them for a few seconds. I find myself using it a lot just for the stun because I'll stun the opponent and get further away from them so I can kite them better. And also I use uh, Shadow Warp quite often to get away from people because it teleports you forward by 15 meters. So if we turn around and pop it, as you can see, it made us jump forward 15 meters. And it removes all crowd control, so if somebody stunned you, you can hit it and get away. Alright, now if you find that you're getting in a situation where everybody has killed off your teammates and you're all alone and looking for a way out, you can hit your Cloak of uh, Death and it'll put you in stealth for 6 seconds. Now, keep in mind, it's only 6 seconds, so after that, you're popped back out and it might be game over for you anyway so yeah this is a really good build because it can it can hurt a lot of people it can do great burst on a single target damage it can uh has a slip away to get away if you need to if you get in too bad of a situation it's ranged it you know just it applies a shield because of the mastery whenever you do damage. Just everything is working good for this build. And it's a really good one to run in Warfronts right now, especially with how it nerfs healers big time. And as most of you know, healing in Warfronts is usually your downfall. Whenever you get on opponents and they're getting healed up and you can't kill the healer, it's just such a bad thing. Well, Reaver is the solution to that issue. So... Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure that you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if you're new to Rift, make sure that you click the link below and create your account with my referral code. Uh, that way you get uh, a cloak in the game, you get an extra bag, which is huge whenever you're first starting Rift. You get weapon enchantments, you get all kinds of good stuff that you want, and it also puts you on all of my friends list, and me on all of yours, so once you hit max level, we can do some PvP together and have a good time. Uh, just make sure you use it. And if you're, uh, if you would like to find a good PVP guild, we are Grimm's Reapers on Wolfsbane server and we are a very casual PVP guild. So don't think that we're going to tell you that you are required to do so many war fronts or go with us on raids or anything like that. We're starting raiding, but we haven't quite, de uh, jumped into it too much. Uh, we do a lot of expert dungeons, we do a lot of warfronts together, we do CQ together, it's a lot of fun being in this guild, but nothing is required of you, so don't come to this guild going, you guys aren't doing enough stuff, it's because we don't require everybody to do stuff. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed it, as usual, my name is Grim, and I will see you next time.